Are you having trouble organizing your content? Well, in this video, I've got a component that will help you do just that. Let's go. Now, before we begin, please do make sure to click that like button as well as to hit that subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates as well as when new tutorial videos gets uploaded. If at any point in time you have difficulties or you have encountered some errors in your development or in your trial run, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Speaking of comments, a fellow pixelator has mentioned in the comment section below regarding the question of how to build a PWA app as well as how to deploy it. So one of the ways to deploy a, or rather one of the ways to build and to deploy a PWA app in the Quasar environment is to first build the app itself. Now, in order to build the app, you need to first build it in a PWA mode using a specific command. Next, once you do that command, the, uh, the generated file will be in a specific directory as well. Now, in terms of deployment, you simply need to copy those files over to your selected hosting environment. Now, if you do those steps in that specific order, you're going to achieve or rather you will be able to deploy your progressive web application. I hope that clears up your question. In our previous video, what we were left with was the tabs component, right? So we have here, as you can see, our tabs component, which was the one we created in the previous video. Now, when I say sister component, what it means is that tabs and tab panels go hand in hand. Why? We're going to show you why is that. So heading over to Quasar's website, you will see that tab panels are a way of displaying more information using less window real estate. So later on, we're going to show you why is that. So without rather without that much explanation, we, we can just jump in directly to the code implementation itself. So here you can see that they have a select, right? So in our case, we're going to use tabs in combination with tab panels. So as you can see, they have implemented a Q option group here. So we have a Q option group. And then you have the Qtab panels. So what determines, or rather, you can see here that the Qtab panels are an element, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use this element in combination with the Quasar tabs. So going back, now here we have our application, right? So here rather, you can see that our application is a bit cluttered, right? So we can adjust that by using the tab panels. So first, we need to implement first the tab panels. So in order to implement the tab panels, what we need to do is we need to create a div. So we're going to create a div here. And then we're going to add Q tab panels. Tab panels. All right, I found it already. There. Now we have a Q tab panels. Next, what the Q tab panels is going to need is a V model. Now, in order to bind the V model together with the Q tabs, we're going to use the, the we're going to use the V model of the Q tab itself in order to synchronize our tabs and tab panels. So, as you can see here, we have the Q tab panels with a V model similar to the tabs we are using above here, as you can see, right? So, now that we have a tab panels, what we need to do next is we're going to add a Q tab panel, meaning we're going to add a tab panel. But before we do that, let's add the animated property first in our tab panels. So if we grab this one, we simply need to put it right here, animated, right? So now we can say, or now we can see that our Q tab panels is animated when we use it later on. So next, we're going to add a Qtab panel. So we simply grab this one. Let's use the placeholder text like that. So let's say, do take note though of the name of a Qtab panel. Please do make sure to use the name of the Qtab panel, which is similar to the Qtab itself. So in our case, we have a Qtab with the name home, right? So we can use the name home. So once we do that, wait, let's rename this to home. So we have a placeholder text here, right? So we're going to duplicate it, let's say three times. Uh, let's see how many, okay. So we have 
three Q tabs right here. So we can use these three as the basis. So if we use that as a basis, what we need to do first is to rename the names. So now we have a mail here. So we're going to add a mail here. And then lastly, since we have a alarms, we're going to rename this as alarms as well. Now, what's going to happen is if I click on the home, you will see that our tab panels, which is on the right side, is going to display home. If I click mail, it should display mail as well. And then if I click the alarms, it's going to display alarms. Now, in order to make them different, let's rename this to mail instead. And then for this one, let's rename it to alarms. Now, once we do that, you can see we are currently at home, right? If we click the mail, it's going to change to the mail. And then if I click the alarms, it's going to change to the alarms as well. So as you will notice, they are animated as well. The Qtabs itself is animated. And then at the same time, the Qtab panels itself is animated as well. So if we could just clip, if we just keep on clicking here, as you can see right there, or right here, they are all animated. So that is why the Qtab panels is considered a sister element of Qtabs because as you can see here, if you click the specific tabs, the content changes as well. So we can use that to display limited set of data. For example, we can declutter our components here. So in order to do that, we simply need to move these components inside the tab panels. So let's say, let's move the carousel, for example. So let's grab this carousel. Yes, this one. So including the buttons, let's include the buttons. So let's grab this one. Let's remove this div, and then let's move it inside the home. So as you can see, the home carousel is now located inside the tab panel. If I click on the mail, it's gone, right? But if I click on home, it goes back. So that is one way of decluttering your UI if you want to use tab panels. So that is one of the most useful features of tab panels. So if I click on alarms, it's gone again. And then if I click on home, it goes back again. So if we follow through and move other, or if we move the other components that we have inside of these tab panels, we're going to declutter most of our UI elements. So as you can see here, we move our dialogue, right? So now if I click on the mail, you will see the open dialogue. If I click on the dialogue, the dialogue opens obviously. But if I click on the home again, the button disappears, right? So as you can see now, we have decluttered the UI in this sense. So aside from that, we can also, let's also move this component right here. So let's move the lists. So if we move the lists here, simply grab this one, cut, and then remove the div. And then let's move it to the, let's see. Let's move it to, where's the third one? So, okay, wait, uh, oh, here. So let's move it, let's move it here instead. Let's move it here. So what's going to happen is if I click the alarms, the alarms is, or rather the component is here, right? So the Bluetooth because we have there the three stars as well as the Bluetooth icon. So based on, this export, based on this example, you will notice that we have decluttered our UI into smaller bits. So this, or rather the tab panels is a very useful component for decluttering your UI, as well as for organizing your content in a timed or in a proper manner, or not, not actually proper, but in a more, let's say simple manner by simply clicking on the buttons. So next, now that we have our basic Q tabs or and Q panels up and running, we can now set or we can now proceed to styling it. So we can set a color for our tab panels. So as you can see here, they have set a color. You can set a color by simply adding the active color, right? And then you can also add the indicating or indicator color. So that is one of the ways of customizing the Qtabs itself. But for the Qtab panels, you can set the classes instead. So in our case, let's find the Qtab panels, which is right here. You have the Qtab panels, right? So what we can do is we can add classes to it. 
So here, let's add a class. Let's say BG. Let's say green. What's going to happen is we have a green background instead. As you can see right here, now we have a green background, right? So there you go. That is one of the ways of customizing the tab panel. So we can go a bit further with that by adding a specific text color. So let's say um, text white to make it much more easier to see them. So as you can see, the text changes colors as well, like this one and this one and this one as well. So that is one of the ways of style or styling your tab panels. So there's also another option aside from styling it with colors. You can also set a vertical queue tabs and then you can set it up in a queue splitter. So what do you mean by that? Meaning you have a tab panel to the side of the vertical tab itself. So from the previous video, we know that we can set the queue tabs in a vertical manner, right? So like this. And then we can, we can display its content on the right side of the tab itself, right? So in this case, what happens is the queue tab panels is on the right side and then the tabs themselves are on the left side. So if I click on the mail, the tab panel changes its content as well, as you can see right here. So they have a tab panel, which is set to a vertical orientation as well. So if you have the queue tabs in a vertical orientation, you can have the queue tab panels in a vertical orientation as well. So it's not just the horizontal, but rather it can cater vertical alignments as well. So aside from those, you can also set custom transitions. What do you mean by custom transitions? In order to implement your custom transitions, you simply need to add a parameter. So in this case, you need to add the transition previous and then the transition next. So in a, in a sense, it is kind of similar to the carousel, right? Carousel has its own animations as well, or you can set its transitions. So in this case, we can add that transition next. So transition previews, let's set it to scale. And then for the transition next, let's say scale as well to make it more uniform. So now that we have that, if we click this, this or rather the transition changes as well. So now we have a transition based on the scale for this one that happens as well. And then lastly, for this one that happens as well. So if I click on the previews or in the next one, regardless of what I click, they all have the same transitions, right? So that is how you apply a transition to your tab panels in combination with Q tabs. So aside from that, you can also set a swipeable Q tab panels and an infinitely or rather an infinite Q tab panel. So what do we mean by that? In order to do that, what you simply need to do is to add the swipeable element or rather property in order to make the tab panels react to touch events. So this swipeable property is useful for those who want to use tab panels for the mobile phones or for the mobile or for the tablets as well. So not just the mobiles, but the tablets as well. So aside from that, you also have the infinite. So infinite, what is infinite for? Basically, the infinite property is rather it allows the tab panels to swipe again back to the first tab panel after it has reached the last tab panel. Therefore, the infinite name, meaning you can swipe until infinity because once it reaches the last, uh, it, the last tab panel, it will simply redirect you back to the first one. Or if you are in the first one, if you swipe it to the previous one, it will redirect you back to the last slide. So that is what it means by using infinite. And then lastly, you also have a vertical swipeable and infinite as well. So aside from the horizontal orientation of swiping the tab panels, you can also swipe them until infinity, either upwards or downwards, in a sense, a vertical manner. So in combination with horizontal and vertical, Swipeable, swipeable, swipeable capabilities, you can implement QTAB panels not just in desktops but also in platforms that are using the touch capabilities, for example, mobile phones and tablets. So, with that in mind, you can use QTABs in combination with QTAB panels to declutter your content, especially on mobile phones as well as tablets, and then allow it allows you to 
reorganize and then rearrange your content in a proper and or in a in a way that consumes less space but allows you to display more content so if you use Q tabs in combination with Q panels you can use them to create as many combinations of tabs and panels as you want as long as it caters or as long as it caters to your needs if this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to click the like button down below. As always, don't forget to click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates as well as our latest tutorial videos. Again, this is Joshua Haji, Software Engineering Supervisor here at Pixelate. See you later, Pixelators!